few problems. All right, so let's do a case study. In this case, let's apply it to a real life case. My example is dating a psycho. So who is a psycho? A psycho could be he or she, it doesn't matter. A person who makes unrealistic demands on your life, on your time, on your space, all right? 20 years ago, exclusively, that's the kind I used to date because it was exciting. All right, so at the time I was uh, working in Schaumburg, that's a, that's a town near Chicago, that's a suburb, located about 32 miles away from Chicago and I was seeing a girl in, living in Chicago. So she would call me up and make these weird demands. She would say, 20, minute, 20 minutes or else. Meaning that I needed to be in Chicago within 20 minutes or else the relationship is over. So if you value her and, and if you value the relationship and if you don't want to be lonely or whatever, so that's what you're going to try to do. So how fast do you have to go in order to travel 32 miles within 20 minutes? All right, so here's an example of how you can apply this in your life and the complications that it's going to cause shortly. All right, so you've got 20 minutes to travel 32 miles. So how fast do you have to go and you want the number in terms of miles per hour? So you do a quick conversions, all right, minutes to seconds, miles to meters. All right, so one minute, 60 seconds, one mile, 1609 meters, and then you do the conversions. All right, so everything is expressed in terms of the MKS unit system. Speed is what you want. Here's the speed formula. All right, so punch the numbers in in terms of the metric units, and then this is going to give you a number in terms of meters per second. And then we need to convert to something that we can relate to. So it's going to be about 96 miles per hour. All right, so if you want to get to Chicago within 20, 20 minutes, if you want to travel 32 miles, if you have to go at 96 miles per hour. So how does that work? Okay, does this mean that uh, you leave the parking lot at 96 miles per hour? So you make a sharp left and right turn into traffic, check to see what happens. Let's assume that you can survive that. What are you gonna do with the traffic? You have the red light stop signs, and you gotta target the pedestrians, stop targets. And then about the highway. All right, so all of a sudden you notice that this is not gonna make a lot of sense, all right? And on top of that, there are problems with that. The major problem with that is obviously the speed is up. Guys, at 96 miles per hour, so the question is what is that represent? You know, whenever you're driving, you're gonna speed up, you're gonna slow down, you're gonna change direction. So the speed is gonna keep changing. So if that's the case, what does that 96 miles per hour represent? What that represents is called the average speed. So the average speed is measured distance over measured time, X over T. So these represent the measured distances and measured times. That's what it means. So what that means is as long as you're averaging 96 miles per hour, it's gonna take you 20 minutes to get there. Okay, so this is 20 years ago. So I had this amazing car, otherwise known as a Ford Tampa. Except the speedometer, if you look at the speedometer, it didn't go beyond 90 miles per hour. Right? That was literally the maximum listed speed on the speedometer. All right? And then the car itself never went up to that speed. In fact, 75 miles per hour was as far as, as fast as you could drive that car. So if that's the case, what do you do? You got to negotiate. You say, hey, my car cannot get up to 96 miles per hour. And then you have to sit down and figure out what the reasonable average speed is. A lot of people think that the reasonable average speed is about 65 miles per hour. So if you're averaging about 65 miles per hour, how long would it take you to travel 32 miles? All right, now let's take a look at that. All right, so average speed is gonna be 65 miles per hour. You're gonna be traveling 32 miles. So which means how long would that take? All right, I'm cheating a little bit, 32 miles per hour to meters. So that's an earlier conversion. Miles per hour to meters per second. I'm gonna do a conversion right there. All right, so come up with the time and then express it in terms of minutes. Now I gotta do a little bit of algebra. Isolate T, so I'm gonna switch those two. And then into this formula, I will plug the numbers, metric units. And boom, boom, I got the numbers. Now we'll get an answer in terms of seconds, express it in terms of minutes. All right, it's mistaken now, but seconds here should be minutes. So that's gonna be about 30 minutes. Okay, so it's 65 miles per hour. It's gonna be about 30 minutes. 96 miles per hour, if you're averaging 96, so it's gonna take 20 minutes. The time difference is 10 minutes. Now, how do you average 65 miles per hour, given the fact that in the city, you've got stop signs, you've got the lights, you got your traffic, you can't go in, you're, you're gonna average about 20 to 25 miles per hour. So you have to compensate on, outside of the city on a freeway. Now you have to go up to 90, 100, 110 miles per hour. So if you're actually going up at that speed, guys, you're not the only one who knows you're going that fast. Or don't like if there's a state police, they also know that they, you're going that fast. Because just like you know what your speed is from the speedometer, they also know how fast you're moving from their radar gun. All right, so the measured speed is known as your instantaneous speed. Your average speed is a calculation, the instantaneous speed is a measurement. So measure speed is how fast you're moving at that instant of time, all right? So you can either measure it using a speedometer or a radar gun. All right, and then you will obviously get a ticket and then you may even end up losing your license if you're doing some that stupid. All right, so here's a creative project based upon the story that I just told you. Talking to his girlfriend, she says um, 20 minutes or else. He does a computation, so it's gotta be 96 miles per hour. He's determined that he wants to stay in that relationship. So he gets up to the speed, he's accelerating, his body gets pushed in the opposite direction. And then, so, and then it gets pulled over and then it's got a Disney-like conclusion to it. All right, guys, at 96 miles per hour, what takes you 20 minutes is 65 miles per hour, it's gonna take you 30 minutes. All right, so you're only saving about 10 minutes 
for distances like 30 to 40 miles per hour, 30 to 40 miles or so, all right, so you end up saving about 10 minutes. It's really not worth your life for somebody else to save 10 minutes because I spent more than 10 minutes a day just by pissing, guys. So, not my sense of hurrying up. And then he ends up getting a big fat ticket. We're almost making the time, guys. Eight minutes to go. All right, pick out the best answer. And put it on the chat. Okay, I see a lot of B's. Very good. B is the best answer. Those of you guys who pick B, give yourself two points for that one. All right, so B is the average speed. So that's the measure distance over measure time. All right, speedometer. All right, I see one A, I see a couple of C's. Oh, okay, cool. I got a correction on that one. Very good. C, 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 instantaneous speed. Speedometer. Speedometer. This is instantaneous speed. You girls have two points on that one. Okay. All right, so Michael Johnson, in this case, I'm looking at the solutions and just about every single person who goes on is C, average speed. All right, so for picking average speed, I'm going to give you guys two points for that one. So let's have two quick discussions regarding this one. Uh, just out of curiosity, why did you guys pick speed over velocity? Because normally you would not distinguish in English. He's running in a circle. He didn't uh, go very far. He's running in a circle. He's actually going in a straight line. <laughs> I don't know. Tracks are circles. Close enough. Well, yeah, speed I'm... just doesn't have a direction. So okay. um, if the we were unaware of the direction. We only had speed. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys five points. All right. Um, because we didn't really discuss velocity formally as yet. Okay, we touched on it, but we were dealing with average speed right now. Okay, very good. The next thing I'm going to focus on is Let's get back to Green versus Johnson. Johnson is over 23, Green is under 23. So who has a larger average speed? Johnson does, right? But the argument is, if Johnson is faster, how come Green has the 100 meter or record? And furthermore, that 27 miles per hour, top speed. What is top speed in this case? Top speed is Green's- Max velocity. Instantaneous speed, right? That's the measured speed in this case. So, Somehow they were using a radar gun when Green was running and they noticed that this guy literally topped at 27 miles per hour. And they had no information regarding Johnson. All right, so this guy literally gets up to 27 miles per hour and that's it. All right, so here's the argument. Green has the world record in 100 meters because Green is much quicker, which means that he has a larger acceleration, which means that he gets up to his top speed much sooner. But his top speed is not as big as Johnson's top speed. Johnson takes longer to reach his top speed but obviously his top speed must be larger than Green's top speed. As a result, his average speed is larger. All right, do you get it? So, which means that Johnson is actually faster than Green. Okay, instead of making a discussion or argument like that, the only thing we do, we look at is the, we do an average speed to average speed comparison. The guy who's faster is gonna have a larger average speed. So in this case, where's a larger average speed? Johnson does. So which means that Johnson was faster than Green. All right, so that was a long discussion. All right, so let's talk about velocity. Velocity is a combination of speed and direction. Okay, we're almost done with this section. Okay, so you have two cars moving at the same speed, but they're not moving in the same direction, so which means that they don't have the same velocity. All right, so which means that velocity is a combination of speed and direction. All right, speed and direction. That's now we're not adding stuff. This is my way of saying it's just combining these two. So it's a combination of speed and direction. It's a vector, so the vector is a combination of magnitude and direction. So you may have two objects moving at the same speed, but they're not moving in the same direction, so they don't have the same velocity. So we have to come up with some notations to distinguish these numbers. So if something is moving to the right, we'll assume that that's a positive velocity. So this is positive. If something is moving to the left, that's going to be a negative velocity. So let's add one more motion direction to this motion. Up is going to be positive, down is going to be negative. So this is moving in the down direction. So this is also going to have a negative velocity right there. So this is negative velocity. So is this one. Does this mean that they both have the same velocity? And immediately, you know, they don't, right? Because they're not moving in the same direction. So which means that we still have to be able to distinguish motion from left to up and down. So what we'll, we'll do is we'll place everything on a coordinate system. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. So this is motion on the x-direction, this is motion on the y-direction. All right, so motion on the x-direction, motion on the x-direction, motion on the y-direction. So we will use subscripts. All right, so to denote vectors, we will get to use uh, positive and negative signs as well as we will use subscripts, x, y, z, subscripts. So that's what we will do. All right, so one last discussion. We've got two minutes to go. All right, so you have an object moving in a circle at 35 miles per hour. So it's moving at a constant speed, okay? And speed is constant. How about velocity? Do you think velocity is constant? Yes or no? No. It's okay. Changing. Because the direction keeps changing. Very good. Keep yourself five points for that one. All right, guys, despite the fact that speed is constant, the direction is not because if the direction keeps changing, it's going to change velocity. Notice that every single point, the direction keeps changing. Because the direction keeps changing, 
It changes velocity. 